I'm very grateful for the extra few minutes to introduce our next speaker, Wojtek Lihota. There's something that I need to confess to in public, and maybe you feel the same. I've had the chance to collaborate with uh, Wojtek on several projects, for example, on our blog, and I love working with Wojtek. Anybody else? Yes, I was expecting quite a few hands in the air. <laughs> exactly. One day he came to me with an idea for a blog post saying, I would like to compare Python and Golang on our blog. I thought, yes, very relevant, let's see. I opened the file and staring at me was a Power Ranger. <laughs> uh, right there on the file, a very key graphic because the title was Go Go Python Rangers. I was skeptical at first, uh, but right now it's our number one blog post, so I'm glad I trusted Wojtek. <laughs> We're going to have a presentation about Python and Go a little bit later in the day, but for now, we'll be talking about serverless. Is that correct, Wojtek? OK, so without uh, further ado, let's stick to the agenda. Chalice, AWS Lambda Micro Framework. Please give it up for Wojtek Lihota. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, uh, today, uh, I will tell you uh, how to use Chalice, a uh, micro framework for AWS Lambda, to simplify development of serverless applications. Uh, so, a few words about me. Uh, I work in SDX Next for more than 10 years already. Uh, after six years as a developer and two years uh, as CTO, I uh, volunteered to become a colonizer and colonize new cities. So uh, since then, I'm, I moved twice uh, and opened uh, two new uh, offices, one in Łódź and uh, one, is one in Gdańsk. Uh, but uh, despite the fact that uh, I'm now a developer of new offices rather than source code, uh, my heart is still close to technology and in my spare time, I uh, still uh, do some coding. Uh, and today I will tell you uh, a little bit uh, about serverless. In the beginning, uh, I will briefly tell you theory, what serverless is and how it's uh, different from uh, other cl uh, cloud uh, uh, pl uh, solutions. Uh, then I will uh, tell a few uh, words more about uh, AWS Lambda, the most popular serverless platform. Um, in, the, uh, in the second part, um, I will show uh, how Chalice can help you uh, and then demonstrate it on a simple use case. Uh, and I hope after uh, the presentation there will be some uh, time for, for qu your questions and, and discussions. Okay, so uh, what, uh, what is serverless? Uh, does it mean that there are no servers and uh, all computations are uh, made by, I don't know, uh, unicorns uh, in fairyland or, or, uh, or jungle ponies uh, somewhere? Uh, of course not. Uh, it means that uh, finally uh, developers can focus only on writing uh, source code that is necessary to develop features and they can um, uh, don't have to worry about servers necessary to run those applications. This boring part uh, for most of developers, uh, I think, is uh, now on the provider uh, side. Okay, but uh, how it differs from other cloud solutions? Uh, to understand that, we uh, we have to at first uh, take a look how. Uh, applications are built. So, to get a service running, we need uh, functionalities in, in some functions. Functions are uh, um, joined together to create an application. An application, an instance of application running on virtual machine. Virtual machine hosted on a uh, server, physical server, and physical server is located somewhere in data center, and there is network environment uh, around it. Okay, so what uh, you could do to uh, run your application? You could build your own uh, data center, of course, 
uh, professional, uh, but also uh, but also uh, um, small one in basement, like we did in STX Next. Uh, and in here, uh, greetings to uh, Tomek and uh, Pavel. Um, uh, but uh, in that case, you have a lot of uh, low-level um, uh, tasks that you have to worry about, like configuring uh, routers, firewalls, uh, taking care of um, backup electricity or uh, air conditioning. Yeah, Developers don't want to do that, of course. So what you could do? You could uh, uh, buy dedicated server. And, uh, uh, and now you have your physical server located in, uh, in a data center provided from, from uh, some provider. Uh, what you could do else? You could uh, use infrastructure as a service. Uh, and uh, in that case, physical servers are managed by the provider. Uh, and you only have to uh, manage uh, uh, virtual machines and uh, operating system of that uh, virtual machines. You could use also a uh, platform as a service. In that case, uh, you don't have even access to operating system, but you still have to manage your instances. If you if your application grows and you want to scale, uh, scale it, uh, you need to initialize more instances uh, and uh, and take care of them. Uh, so what to do next? Serverless. In that case, the platform takes care of scaling of your application, basically. Uh, and uh, developers can focus only on writing the source code necessary for uh, functionality. And to have the uh, um, full, full view of, uh, of the cloud, you, we, we need to mention about software as a service. In that, uh, in that uh, way, uh, you don't have access to source code at all. Uh, you just use uh, the platform. Okay. So some examples, um, these are the, the most popular hosting platforms. Um, IIS, the most popular is probably uh, EC2 from Amazon. From uh, PIS, uh, you probably heard about Google App Engine or Heroku. Uh, and uh, on serverless, uh, it's again, it's uh, um, available on all uh, major uh, platforms. There is also uh, open source uh, platform Apache OpenWhisk, uh, but the most popular is uh, AWS Lambda. And now let's see uh, more details about this. Uh, it was uh, introduced by Amazon in uh, November 2014, so it's uh, three and a half years on the market. Uh, you can write your code in Python, Java, uh, JavaScript, and C Sharp. Uh, in Python, uh, you can write uh, in Python 2 and Python 3 since a year. Um, and uh, to to run your code, you uh, you have to specify the uh, memory that uh, the, 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 the Lambda function will, uh, will need, will, um, will use. Uh, so you, you can uh, choose from uh, 128 megabytes up to one and a half gigs. Uh, and um, the interesting thing is that Amazon doesn't specify how fast processor you will get uh, to, to run Lambdas. The only known uh, thing is that the more memory you will reserve, the faster processor you will get. So also a good idea is to uh, reserve even more memory than you really need, just to get uh, faster exe uh, execution time. Um, Lambda is also uh, even driven. Uh, it means that uh, code, uh, the, the Lambda functions uh, um, are executed uh, when some event uh, uh, happens. It can be internal event uh, of uh, Amazon, of uh, AWS. For example, new uh, file was uploaded to S3 or uh, a new message was uh, pushed to the queue. Uh, 
um, and so on, uh, or it can be uh, um, uh, uh, it can be uh, triggered by uh, a thing from outside. For example, HTTP request uh, uh, sent into API Gateway. In that case, API Gateway creates an event which uh, triggers uh, Lambda. Uh, this is sample code of uh, plain, uh, plain um, Lambda function in, uh, in Python. Um, what's interesting, this is just a normal function which takes two uh, arguments. One is event object, which, uh, in which uh, you have some information about the event uh, which triggered the Lambda. And context object, uh, this is an object uh, in, uh, in which you can place some additional parameters that you would like to um, uh, put uh, uh, input. Um, what's, uh, what's more, uh, if you will print something in Lambda, uh, the output uh, of the print will, uh, will go to uh, cloud, uh, CloudWatch. CloudWatch is a service inside AWS which collects all the data, all the logs from different uh, uh, services in uh, AWS. Uh, function have, uh, have to um, uh, in, in return something. Uh, the return value is uh, uh, changed into uh, JSON and uh, sent back uh, to, uh, to the caller. Uh, this simple function just prints, uh, just uh, creates a dictionary with some uh, debugging uh, values. Uh, so uh, nothing interesting. Um, but what to do to make it work? Yeah, we have the source code and what to do to to uh, to have it uh, running, you have to uh, open in your browser the AWS Management Console. This is a screenshot for, from it. Uh, you have to manually create a Lambda function, manually uh, create um, an API endpoint, uh, manually connect one to each other, manually uh, define policy. So a, a set of uh, um, uh, rules, a set of uh, permissions that, uh, um, that the Lambda function needs, and paste the source code uh, in the box below. Uh, as you can see, there is a lot of manual steps. And here comes uh, Chalice. With, uh, with Chalice, uh, you can uh, much easier uh, define endpoints. Um, uh, and uh, there is a uh, um, uh, there are also uh, 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 f uh, th there is also code which helps you to uh, get uh, access to HTTP, HTTP requests like uh, uh, post uh, uh, values or headers or cookies and so on. Um, uh, Chalice creates uh, also automatically IEM file policy file. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, rather simple. Uh, it's um, just analyze usage of Boto uh, library. B Boto library is a library to con connect to other uh, services inside AWS. So just analyzing which uh, functions of Boto library are used, we can uh, the Chalice uh, can can see what permissions should uh, should be assigned to to this Lambda function. Uh, there is a one-line deployment tool uh, which uh, helps you deploy application, local server, uh, and a uh, nice uh, logs viewer, so you don't have to log in to CloudWatch. Uh, okay, so to start uh, a new project, it's just a few lines of code, install Chalice, configure uh, connection to AWS, and create a new project. Um, and uh, this, goes, uh, this code is, uh, uh, corresponds to the previous code, but this time is uh, written in Chalice, uh, with the help of Chalice. Uh, so you have to initialize the uh, application object, and you have to define the endpoint. Uh, this, this is just an URL on which uh, the, uh, the uh, API will, will listen 
um, for requests. Um, uh, to get uh, access to request, uh, it's uh, inside uh, an app, an app uh, object, um, and it's uh, uh, and it's uh, uh, much more useful than parsing it uh, the, the data by yourself. Um, and that's it. Um, this code you can uh, run locally uh, without so without pushing it to a hosting environment. You can test it. Uh, you can see how it works. It just emulates a HTTP server and emulates the uh, Lambda environment. Um, and when it's ready, you can deploy it by just one uh, one liner uh, and uh, after deployment, you get the URL on which this particular um, Lambda uh, um, uh, is located. Okay, that's it uh, from a short introduction of uh, Chalice, and uh, let's take a look on uh, use case. Uh, to, to demonstrate the, um, uh, uh, how Chalice wo uh, work, I uh, I have created the second version of Grot game. Uh, uh, there's a link you can you can play it online uh, if you want. Uh, the, the, uh, the, there are more fields and there is a preview line, so it's uh, much easier to find uh, the uh, best uh, best answer. This is a simple logic game, a logic game in which you have to uh, find the longest. Uh, uh, chains of uh, arrows. Um, there is also source code. Uh, the architecture uh, of, of this application is very simple. Uh, static files are served from S3, uh, and we have API on different domain, uh, uh, which um, uh, in which is uh, behind API gateway and API gateway. Uh, triggers uh, execution of uh, lambdas. A lambda can uh, get and or set uh, data in uh, simple DB. Simple DB is a very simple uh, NoSQL database from uh, Amazon, um, and that's it. Uh, very very simple um, uh, architecture. Uh, but uh, uh, as I mentioned. Uh, we have uh, two domain, domains. One is for st the static files, and the uh, second one is for API. Uh, so uh, we need to configure uh, cross-origin uh, resource sharing. And of course, uh, Chalice uh, has that as well. Uh, you have to create a course config object um, and uh, further on use it. Uh, what's interesting uh, in here also is Chalice Leap. Uh, if your file is uh, too long, too big, and you want to split it into um, uh, smaller parts, uh, yes, of course, you can do that, but uh, uh, the, the new files, Python files, you have to put into Chalice Leap uh, library because only files from this library will be uh, added to the zip file um, released to uh, to AWS Lambda. Um, as I mentioned, a course config you have to uh, use in your endpoint declaration. Um, uh, the uh, uproot uh, is uh, quite similar to um, to declaration of uh, endpoints in Flask. Uh, you, you can also use the um, the brackets to to uh, define parameters. Um, the the next uh, interesting thing uh, is uh, API key required set to true. In that case, API gateway will take care of uh, validating uh, um, API key um, API key um, attached to the request. And uh, the Lambda will be executed only if user provided uh, um, a valid uh, API key. Uh, and uh, then you can get uh, API key and uh, identify a user, for example, 
uh, by this API key, uh, key uh, um, doing uh, uh, um, uh, running this this uh, this line. Uh, what else? If you don't want to return um, uh, status OK to hundred, uh, you need to write an error um, imported from from Charlie's. Um, and uh, that's it uh, from from this simple use case. Um, for the end, I would like to share some tips for you uh, that I uh, that I've learned uh, working on on the second version of Grot. Uh, so, uh, in AWS Lambda, you're paying for execution time of your lambdas. Uh, so. Uh, waiting time uh, for external uh, uh, services is count uh, into that execution time. Uh, so designing uh, uh, the architecture and uh, your lambdas, you uh, you need to uh, decrease uh, uh, the external calls as much as possible. You can do this by just removing unnecessary calls or combining uh, some operations together. Uh, the second thing uh, to optimize cost uh, of uh, running lambdas is to um, uh, is to uh, tweak the uh, uh, reserved uh, memory that I m mentioned on, on one of the slides. That way that most of the uh, requests um, uh, will take less than what, uh, 100 uh, milliseconds. This is the, the uh, resolution of time uh, used by uh, Amazon to, to, to count time. So uh, to uh, pay, uh, pay uh, the, 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 um, the, the littlest, uh, the, the, the best way is to increase RAM until most of requests are below uh, that value. Uh, to control, to have uh, budget under control, you can use also a uh, usage plan uh, of API Gateway. Uh, there you can configure how many uh, requests can be uh, sent uh, in a second or uh, by a user. Uh, the next thing is um, warm up time. So, uh, AWS Lambda will automatically turn off uh, your Lambdas. When are uh, when they are not used? Uh, so um, during next uh, uh, use of this lambda, uh, it will be turned on, but uh, the warm up time can take uh, from uh, from a few hundred milliseconds up to a few seconds sometimes, uh, and you paying for the time. So to uh, to uh, uh, decrease chance of turning off uh, the or those rarely use lambdas. It's a good idea to combine them in one uh, package with uh, with frequently used lambdas, which uh, will um, um, will uh, not be uh, turned off uh, that uh, frequently. Uh, you can also configure uh, CloudWatch uh, to monitor execution time and uh, gives you alerts when uh, the, the, the budget uh, is uh, going, uh, um, it, it, it go going to be big. And uh, if you, the last thing, if you like uh, to develop in your favorite Python framework like Django or Flask or Pyramid uh, and to run your application on serverless, you can do that with the help of Zappa. Just check it. Uh, it's uh, quite a nice uh, library. Okay, so to summarize it, uh, Charlie simplifies uh, simplifies writing Lambda and deploying them. Uh, this is not a, a full framework uh, in which you can build uh, uh, huge applications. Uh, it's mainly focused on uh, creating APIs uh, behind uh, API gateways. Uh, and the drawback of using uh, Chalice is uh, the vendor lock-in. So if uh, someday you will, uh, you will uh, want to move to some other platform, uh, Google or, or uh, Azure, uh, you will have to rewrite your whole uh, thing uh, to the new platform. And that's it. Any questions?
Okay, hi. M my question is more maybe about the approach itself. So where do you think, based on your experience, where are the limits of using this serverless approach? So I mean that if your game after this uh, event will become so popular that you will have, let's say, maybe 500,000 users making moves every second, uh, is it too much or will it still scale thanks to the Amazon platform? Uh, or or it's absolutely something that you will... Where do you think the bottleneck is? Maybe this is the okay. question. Okay, uh, so there, uh, there are two reasons that you would like to switch to classic IIS. The one is costs. Uh, so uh, the serverless AWS Lambda is cheaper when uh, uh, there, uh, to, to some uh, uh, amount of requests per second. Uh, we have it on our uh, blog that we work with uh, Kuba, uh, and I think it's about 8,000 uh, 8, uh, uh, a second request. B uh, higher, uh, the, the, if, if you have more uh, requests uh, that uh, this value, it's cheaper to go uh, and run your instances uh, on a, um, EC2. So this is one, uh, one thing. And the second uh, limitation, if uh, uh, memory, there is only uh, one gig and a half. Uh, so for example, if you want to uh, run some big computations with machine learning, for example, sometimes uh, one gig and a half is just too less. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, any more questions? And Let's I hope that uh, I will have uh, such traffic on my, uh, on my game. Yeah, we will. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have to introduce microtransactions, I think, at that point. <laughs> okay, I see a question in the back. Um, thanks for play. the presentation. Um, is there um, a cost in terms of execution time when you're using a chalice compared to not using any framework? Uh, yes, there is slight uh, 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 um, change because uh, Chalice parses the request uh, uh, in the beginning of execution. So yes, there is, but it's uh, it's really a uh, small uh, value. Thanks. Any more questions? All right, coming to you. Excuse me. Oh, and we've got around five more minutes left for Q and A. Please keep it in mind. Is Chalice limited only to handling HTTP requests, or you can handle uh, an internal Amazon event too? Uh, yes, you can, but uh, you have to configure that manually. All right, looking for more hands in the air. Okay. Do you in the back, all right. <laughs> Sorry? Uh, you want to? Okay. So I would have uh, two questions. Uh, because uh, one uh, problem I think that you said that uh, if you have a lot of requests, it's better to use classic IIC. But uh, what uh, if in the situation where we are using Lambda and then uh, our portal becomes more popular uh, after some time? We have to rewrite this to the IIC or pay a lot of money for uh, Lambda functionality in this moment? Um. Isn't this a problem? It's it's not that a lot of money uh, more. Uh, it's uh, some some uh, some uh, the, the cost will be higher, but uh, not uh, I don't know two or three uh, times uh, more. Uh, yes, in that case you have to uh, rewrite it uh, because the uh, running uh, uh, I showed that uh, Charlie's can be can run locally, but this is only an emulation. Uh, and uh, it's it not meant for production. Then yes, you you will have to rewrite uh, uh, some uh, some parts uh, to, for example, Flask, which has uh, quite similar syntax. Okay, and I have also one more question about uh, why Lambda, uh, in the comparison uh, with the other uh, services from, for example, Microsoft Azure or uh, Google. Uh, Lambda is uh, uh, one of the most popular, or probably the most popular, uh, serverless platform, uh, and you have a lot of uh, uh, a lot of 
um, technical uh, blogs, uh, posts, uh, and so on about it. Um, so so that, that's why. And Chalice was created by uh, employees of uh, Amazon. The same, uh, the same people who created Bottle Library. Um, so, so uh, it 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 was meant from the start to run on AWS Lambda. Okay, so it's uh, mostly about popularity of this uh, service, not hard uh, arguments about uh, be being better than other similar uh, platforms. Yeah, okay. yeah. I, I I've choose uh, AWS Lambda for growth uh, uh, because of the uh, popularity. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. And that would be about it when it comes time for our questions. Let me just move once more. Please thank Wojtek Lichota for his presentation.